Hello and welcome back to another uh, lecture on structural analysis. This time we're going to go ahead and do a life load calculation. This is a, a floor plan, typical floor plan for a 10 story building. And we like to know it's an office building. And we like to know what is the uh, life load on top of column A3, all the way at the bottom of the first floor. So you're going to go from 10th floor and calculate all the way to the bottom of the first floor, find out what's a load due to the life load. And that column is going to be on a footing. So let's just talk about a building a little bit. The building is, uh, this is the dimension. And uh, ninth floor is a storage, which is 125 pound per square foot. But before I get to that, let's go ahead and talk about what is life load and what the code says and how we calculate it and what, what we should know. Then we come back and we calculate this uh, problem. But if you know all that stuff, that's fine. Just go ahead and uh, move on on a video, get to this problem, and you can see how it's done. But I recommend you should watch, learn about life load. It's really complicated and it's interesting. All right, so we're going to talk about what is life load. Life load is basically uh, when you design a building, you design it for the people that occupy it. What is this occupation for? If it's for a uh, hotel, then it's because you're going to have more often, more people are going to be there, so it's 100 pounds per square foot per IBC. IBC is the International Building Code. And if it's an office, office is only occupied during daytime, and it's closed on a holiday and a weekend, so you go 50 pounds per square foot. And the definition of life load is basically is not dead. Anything that moves around could be vehicle, could be anything that you move from here to there, that'd be considered a life load. So the code came back and said, well, listen, the life load is uh, everything, occupancy of the building and other structure that does not include construction, environmental load, which is basically wind load, snow load, rain load, earthquake, and flood, and you know, all that stuff. So the life load is, could be floor life load or a roof life load. The roof life load is basically, you're not going to live on a roof. And if you do, then they become a floor life load. Floor life load. So sometimes the roof is only designed, occasionally we go up there for a maintenance, do something. So you design them for that. We as a structural engineer, we always design for the worst case scenario. Because sometimes you never know what's going to happen. And you as a structural engineer, you have to protect yourself. Follow the code religiously. Because at the end, when you go to a court, that's what's it's going to be saving you. Know the code in and out. So life load is usually, roof life load is about 20 pounds per square foot. And let's go to the next slide, see what I have here. Yeah, we did talk about this one. Uh, you have heavy life load according to IBC life load that are greater than 100 pounds per square foot must not be reduced okay so keep it do not reduce it life load for members supporting two or more floor are permitted to be reduced by a maximum of 20 percent but L must not be less than a calculated by IBC which we'll get to in a minute and these are the codes you should know these all this code for passenger vehicle also it's a, a movable if you build in a garage and then uh, partition provision is what is a partition that can be relocated that is those type of that are not permanently attached to the structure are considered to be life load in office and other building because they are considered to be variable by nature so you move them around it's not going to stay around so they, the code allows a life load it requires you put a life load of 15 pound per square foot However, if your life load is more than 80 pounds per square foot, as we talked about, we talk about, you cannot use the partition load. Then we have all this. This is part of the code. Uh, it's, it's interesting. You should read some of this stuff. And uh, heavy vehicle, that's, and if a garage is more than 10,000, that's for the bridge design. And let's go to the next one. Impact load also can be considered become double, but... This is an international building code. This building code has a list of all the uh, uh, floor. For example, here it says uh, office use is 50 pounds. If you have a computer room, that's going to be 100 pounds. 
and so on and so forth in here. This is the equation for reducing life load. We will use an example right here. This is the equation both in a matrix system and in an imperial system. L is a reducible life load. LO is the initial, like if you're using an office 50 pound, that's what's going to be 50 pound. And then you have the uh, influence area. The influence area is basically the, uh, um, all right, this is the influence area. Uh, if we have this building, this is the column. The uh, tributary area for this column, center column, is halfway between this column and that column, halfway between this column and that column, halfway between this column and that column. You get it. So this is the tributary area. However, the influence area, this column says, wait a minute, I'm so strong, I can really handle all this load from here all the way to here. The entire, all the way to the next column I can take over. So that's the influence of this column. But we, as a structural engineer, we assign this for a tributary area. So we say, no, wait a minute, we just design you for this part. We know you're strong enough to take all of them. So this is the influence area. And usually the influence area given by the code for exterior column is for, for each column for, an, and you can see right here. So that's the equation. Roof life load, the equation is given is L is R is equal L0 time R1 time R2. Basically is L0 is equal 20 pound. And it says, it says the code says it cannot be less than 12, cannot be more than 20. However, it's based on uh, two things. One, the tributary area. If the tributary area is less than 200 feet square, then your R1 is equal 1. If it's more than 600, then it's 0.6, and if it's between, it's this. Then also the slope of the roof. If the pitch of the roof is based on an inch per foot in this equation, how many inch per how many foot pitch you have. And if it's uh, less than that is equal 4 is equal 1, between 4 and 12 is equal this equation, and if a pitch is steep more than uh, 12 on 12, which is a 45 degree, that's 0.6. Okay, so now you learned uh, about uh, life load. What I have done, I have used a spread Excel sheet to do this because it's too much calculation. But uh, let me show you the Excel sheet, then we come back and do first two, three floor by hand, and then we use the Excel sheet to do the rest of it. Excel sheet, and what we have done is basically make the, uh, this is for a column A3, uh, and uh, first uh, column, I have the story from 10th floor all the way to the first floor. Then I have the uh, life load uh, in PSI. This N stands for non-reducible life load. We talked about that, um, like a partition life load cannot be reduced. And if ninth floor is 125 pounds per square foot, that cannot be reduced. And then the reducible is basically the uh, uh, roof load, which is up here and then the office load, which is per IBC. They both were IBC 2018 at this time. And then we have the turbotry area, which we're going to calculate in a minute. And this is uh, the influence area, and it's cumulative. And then the reduction, then we do a um, final calculation for life load, then we add them up and we convert them. So we go step by step through this. Let me just go back do some calculation here. We're going to start from a uh, top floor and work all the way down from a uh, roof. So the roof, roof life load is, uh, uh, this is the equation that we went over it. It's time R1 and R2, which is 20 times R1 and R2. But before we calculate R1, we have to know the turbotry uh, uh, area of the uh, column A3. Remember, column A3 is here. So the next column is 28 feet away. There's nothing on outside. It's the edge column. So what we're going to say the AT, the turbotry area for this column is equal uh, 28 time and, and halfway between this column and the next column is 20 divided by 2, which is 10. And then halfway between this column and the next column is 25 divided by 2 is 12 and a half. 12.5, and that should give me 315 square foot. Now, from the code, we're going to find R1, and R1 is equal 1.2 minus 0 0.001 time area, turbo 3 area, which is 1.2 minus 0 0.001 times 315, and that will give us uh, 0.89. 
R2 is based on the slope of the roof, and our roof is a, a, what is a half inch per foot, uh, which is basically uh, R2 comes out equal to because it falls in between, uh, we're going to say the reason is F is equal a uh, half inch, which is less than 4, therefore R2 is equal 1. Now we're going to calculate this right here. We're going to say, okay, LR is equal, uh, that's a 20 pound, the 20 come from the code. 20 time 1 time 0.89, and that's going to be, uh, should be wrong, but you know what I mean, 17.8 uh, pound per square foot. And if we look at the, uh, I will come back in the Excel sheet, and you know where we got this 17.8. So that's, we have start off from a 10th floor, and per code is 20 pound, reducible. And the area, it was 315. We, that was not applicable, not applicable, and it came out to 17.8 pound per square foot. Now we'll see how we got those two other numbers. Let me bring this down a little bit. So now we're going to set the axial load. is equal to uh, 17.8 pound per square foot, all right? And then we have the uh, uh, turbotry, which is 315 area <coughs> square foot. Let's divide by 1,000 to make it kips, 5.6 kip. Ninth floor is a storage, and the storage said they said is 125 pound per square foot, which is bigger than 100, that means it's non-reducible. Because it's non-reducible, then just we're going to go ahead and calculate axial load. And that's going to be 125 times 315. Let's divide by 1,000 to make it a kips. And that's going to come out to 39.4 kip. So we're going to add that to the spreadsheet. Nothing big. What is important from here on? So now let's go ahead and do uh, eighth floor, which is a typical floor, and eight to one is the same thing. The eighth floor is because it's the office building, and it's uh, per code is fifty pound per square foot, and this is the edge beam. I mean edge column. And the influence area, KLL per code, is equal 4. So we know KLL for this column, A3, is equal 4. Equation is equal, L is equal, L0 time 0.25 plus 15 divided by a square root of a KLL time AT. Of course, there has to be, as it says on the load, got to meet the criteria whether it's going to be more than 50% or 40%. Now, let's go ahead just to do this first one. L is equal. Uh, there was 50 time 0.25 plus uh, 15 divided by uh, 4 time. 315, and that give me, so let's take this number and take them to Excel because each time you go on a floor, your turbulent area has got to accumulate. All right, so let's go ahead and use the Excel, see how we're going to figure this out. Let me just erase all this stuff and start over again. Um, Oh no, it's gone. All right. So we're going to start from a 10th floor. And if you remember, we calculated, we said, uh, we just did it a minute ago, that the rifle, uh, roof life floor is 20 pound reducible. So we put that there. Under this heading, it says life load, that's reducible. Under R, N is a non reducible. The uh, AT is, uh, we calculated it was 315, if I remember. That's good. 
And then the KL that doesn't apply, the this doesn't apply, and the final comes out to, remember we calculated, it was uh, 17.8. How we got that is uh, we reduced this. Remember we reduced the term R1 times R2 and came out to 17.8. We talked about that also. Now on here we're going to say, okay, that's the same thing, N is 0, so that becomes 17.8 anyway. And let's move in here. We want to go ahead and, um, well, I made, a, I made a mistake, hold on. We're going to go ahead and convert this uh, to uh, kips. So what we're going to do, we're going to say equal, type in equal, and it's going to be uh, parentheses open. And then you're going to have uh, this number, 17.8, multiplied by uh, turbo 3 area, close it, divided by 100,000, by 1,000, and hit enter. And that's where we had 5.6 in the previous one. And so that's the top floor, and it's going to be the same number here. I'm just going to type in 5.6 for now. So non, we're going to go to a floor, 9 floor. It is non-reducible, and it was 125 pounds per square foot. Turbotary area is going to stay the same on every floor for that column all the way to the first floor. And KLL doesn't count because it's non reducible. And finally, we're going to come down to here, it's going to be 125 pounds per square foot. Then we're going to go ahead, type in the same equation. What I'm going to do, I'm going to say is equal. Uh, actually, you don't have to do that. Uh, you can just go ahead, drag it down. The Excel will take care of it for you. 39 point. Now come in here, it says uh, equal this plus this cell enter. So there we have that. Now the eighth floor, which we talked about, we said it was a typical floor. Now eighth floor, we're going to have non-reducible uh, 15 pound partition load. Remember we talked about it when we said about what the uh, uh, code said. What I did in here, I put all the stuff down here so I can remember it. I wrote it down here per IVC 1607.5 partition that can be relocated and is 15 pound and it cannot be reduced and also is a, uh, be included for movable partition unless the nominal uniform floor load is greater than or equal to 80 pound. Our floor load is less than 80 pound because it's a 50. Office load is a 50 pound so therefore we're going to use 15 uh, pound of uh, uh, pound per square foot of partition load. The AT is going to stand the same. Now KLL right here, it's going to be a, a KLL. Remember we talked about. Let me bring that up. Let me see if I can find my PowerPoint. KLL for exterior column is equal four, and this is the equation we're going to use, and these are the rule we're going to follow. And let's go back in here. So I'm going to go ahead and say okay KLL time AT, that is equal 4 time 315. We're going to start from that floor, that typical floor is going to be our first floor. Alright, so that's hit enter and that becomes 1260. The reduction, we're going to go ahead and use this equation right here. This underneath here, underneath the square root, I just have this here because it makes it easier for me to make this column to write this equation in here. So let's write this equation. This, we're going to use this number for this equation right here. So we can put them right underneath the bracket. So the reduction is going to be right here. I'm going to just redo this equation. It's going to be equal and it's going to be uh, 50 multiply by parentheses open uh, 0 0.25 plus then we have uh, uh, parentheses open 15 divided by let's open up parentheses again and that will be uh, this number right here okay close the parentheses make them by power 0 0.5, that's the same as a square root. And let's close the parentheses, one, one more, and let's say good luck, see if it works. 
Shura works. So now we're going to have a final uh, life load, which is going to be this plus that one. Since we reduce this 50 to a 33.6, then we can go ahead and add the 50 into it. That's going to be right here equal this number plus this number, enter. So now we have this. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate it. I don't have to do the equation because Excel does it for you. So I'm going to click right here. I'm going to push my, put it down right there. Okay, 15.3 is good. And then see, that's the accumulation. See if it does it. If not, we have to do it, write a formula. Yeah, that's what it will happen. So that's a typical floor. And for the second one, and this kind of number is going to be more. So this kind of be stays the same, this number. It's going to be 15 all the way to the bottom. 50, it's uh, per code, it's going to be for each floor. And then we have to reduce it. Because you're going to reduce it, it has to be accumulative. We're going to go backward. So KLL this time, it's going to be uh, this number right here. 4 times 315 plus 315, because you got to account for the floor above it. So I'm going to say that's equal. All right. 4 times 315 times 2, because I'm going to have 315 twice. So hit Enter. So that is equal 2520. So Excel hopefully is going to do this for us, and we don't have to do that all calculation. And bring it down, grab the corner, and that's 27. That's good. And now here, see if we can go ahead and do the same thing. It's going to add 15 to it. Uh, should come out to 42. That's perfect. And here, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. There you go. 13 is good. And this accumulated, and that's going to come out to 73. You go ahead and do the same thing for all of them. And this number is going to again become bigger. And this number is going to be what? It's going to be equal 4 times 315 times 3. We we'll account for the, all the 3 4 combined. Hit enter. And 3780. And you do the same thing. Drag it down. Drag this one down. Drag this one down. Same as with this one. 86. You can fix this. I don't like this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go uh, click on format cell. Uh, hit number 2 is good. Anyway, so you can go ahead and do all of them. And it's going to become like this one. And that's how it's done. I hope you like this. And if you do, you give it a thumbs up.